we are going to be looking at parasitic ova segments and protozoa. These are found in your ID quiz resources section of Google Classroom. We have some supplemental websites and information here for you so you can learn more about the common uh, ova or eggs that you're going to be viewing when you are doing fecal exam and other diagnostics. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my notes. These are going to be a little bit different than our average notes. So we have our title up at the top left, name, date, and session on the right. We are going to be looking at the scientific name of some of these organisms as well as just the classification of the species. Uh, so we're going to be grouping some together as well. So on the right hand side of your notes, you're going to include the common name, whether or not it's zoonotic, the route of transmission, and definitely a drawing. Some of these ova or the eggs look very similar to each other, so it's very important that you draw them as best as you can, and definitely use the scientific name to search up some more images so you can see a plethora of them. This is though where we have, Google is not always accurate in what it tells us, and we really need to make sure we're specific with those names, which is why I'm sharing with you the common name as well as those scientific classes classifications. We're going to find with the, this set that some things are what we call species specific. So we really need to make sure we're using the proper name so that way we know whether or not uh, we're looking at something else because even though it's super, super small, if it's different species, they're still going to have some different characteristics. So the first word that we're going to be looking at is host. Now I'm not talking about you hosting an awesome party. I'm talking about an animal host. So it's an animal or a plant that may provide nourishment and or supports another organism in some way. So you know those awesome sharks that have the sucker fish on them? The shark would be then the host. Next we have a parasite and our parasite is an organism that lives on or in another organism and it causes harm to that organism. So with our example of the shark and the suckerfish, the suckerfish is not a parasite because it's not harming that shark in any way. Uh, but a leech, however, right, would be feeding off of the flesh of its host, so therefore it would be a parasite. Next, we're going to talk about a fomite. A fomite is going to be a word that you commonly hear in the industry, and this is when we're talking about transmitting diseases or transmitting organisms that could possibly cause disease. Uh, so a fomite is any inanimate object to which infectious material adheres and can be transmitted. So your doorknob, your cell phone, your table, anything that is not alive is considered a fomite because there could be pathogenic material on it that could then be transmitted to you or another organism. Next we have zoonosis. Uh, so zoonosis is going to be very common in our industry and we also refer to it as zoonotic. So a disease has zoonotic potential or we have zoonosis and this is a disease that can be transmitted between animals and humans. So roundworm would be an example of that. Rabies is a zoonotic disease. Uh, so these are diseases that we're going to be more cautious of and we might have some more protocol around if our animal is diagnosed or being treated for one of those diseases. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into some of the other things as well, which is our protozoa. So uh, protozoa are single-celled organisms that are a little bit more complex than bacteria, and they're also going to be larger. All right, so we're gonna start with our helminth species or our worms. So first we have our Tinea species and ova we're talking about our eggs. So uh, Tinea are tapeworm species. So some of these species are zoonotic, others are species specific. And so species specific means that they are species specific. They are not going to be transmitted between different species. Uh, so it depends on though the species of tapeworm. Uh, so the transmission is injection, ingestion of infected prey or meat. So if an animal is eating, uh, catching its prey, and a mouse is infected and it eats it, then it will then be infected. If humans are consuming raw meat, right, then we can be infected by that. 
then we are going to look at the example of that egg and we have the full development of it. So here's the last stages. We can see around it, we have this very thick uh, membrane around the egg and then you have the developing material inside. Uh, so you're going to want to remember that outside edging. So when you draw this, I would draw a large circle, then a circle right around that, or inside of it rather, and then kind of fuzzy lines. So just etch your paper right and kind of shade that part in, and then make sure you do a bumpy little body on the inside and give yourself a little gap. Next, we have the segment. So this is the Tanea worm segment, right? So once it's an adult, then it segments out. These segments are wider, all right? So they are shorter and wider here, which is going to be different than the next one we're going to look at. So this is the Dipylidium species over egg, and these are the flea tapeworms. So uh, with the flea tapeworm, zoonosis is rare and often found in children, uh, and it's often found in children that enjoy eating sand, because your uh, feral cats will defecate in sandboxes. They bury their feces and then children eat sand and then therefore they're able to get the flea tapeworms uh, and through ingestion of that. So think about when you were super young and you would eat sand in the play box, you were probably eating some cat feces. All right your picture right here so it almost looks like a whole bunch of cotton candy is much different than the other one uh, so for this i would draw one large circle and then lots of little circles inside and if you look really closely you can see that darkening in the center of where the actual worm is developing at and so there as well boom all right, so that's the egg, and then here's your segment. Your segment looks more like rice kernels, right? So with your flea tapeworm, you are looking at rice kernels. That's how you're gonna tell the difference. So if it looks like your gut has some rice kernels coming out of its tushy, that is because it has some flea tapeworms. Next is Trichurus trichuria, or um, trichuria. Yeah. Just be confident. Try it. Be confident. Use Google search. Ask um, your vets how to say those. Ask Ms. Yankee. Ask any of the adults. Ms. Marco, no. Um, just be confident, right? And try it. Can't get it right if you don't get it wrong first. These are our whipworms. Uh, whipworms are zoonotic. Uh, transmission is just ingestion of those eggs. So it could be in the feces, could be in the um, flesh. Species mainly infects humans or the species that does mainly infect humans are the Trichorus the Trichorus or Trichorus vulpus are the two that commonly infect humans. Um, one of the things with whipworms that's really cool with them uh, that you can see very well are the ends. So they have little openings on the on both sides of the ova, and then it's got that little bit of that cell membrane around it. All right, or that egg membrane. So that's our trichuria, uh, trichurus trichuria. Next, we have Toxicara canis ova, which is our roundworm species. Roundworm are zoonotic, so you do want to make sure that you're washing your hands every time that you're working with animals that uh, are infected with roundworm. Transmission is through the uh, placental, uh, the placenta from the bitch to the pup. So we do call female dogs bitches, right? Uh, or queen if it's a cat. So they are going to be able to be transmitted through that placental barrier. That's why even if your adult dog doesn't have worms and you've dewormed them, um, the eggs are actually hiding dormant and then they're able then when that fetus is developing, they pass through the placenta. You can also get roundworm through ingestion of the ova or an infected host. So if you eat meat that you don't cook, then you could then be infected with roundworm that way as well. 
and here we have the eggs. So these are a little bit harder to see, but if I zoom in on those, I've got a nice dark fuzzy circle. Um, very ununiform, right? Where the first ones that we saw were very uniform in their circularness. These, some are circular, some are more ov ovular um, shapes, so just kind of take a note that they are not symmetrical. And then you do have a very thin shell uh, that lining, that membrane right there is fairly thin. Next, we have another roundworm species called Ascaris, Ascaris lumbricoides. Uh, so Ascaris lumbricoides. Uh, these again is another roundworm species. They are zoonotic, uh, transmissible between swine and humans because there's a hybrid of them. So two different species, the lumbricoids and the suum, uh, were able to replicate together, breed together. Uh, so there is a hybrid that is zoonotic between swine and humans. Uh, transmission is ingestion of ova. Generally, that ova is coming out in the feces. This is why we do fecal floats. So here's your eggs. We have this really cool um, circular kind of bumpy pattern on the outside of that ova. And then the inside is that developing egg right there. Uh, so this, I would draw one circle and then I would draw little ringlets around that edge. And then inside I would shade in just a little bit uh, so you can get that uh, good picture. Next we have Strunglidae. Strunglidae, this is actually the photo that was in your bell work not too long ago. So it's another roundworm species. Uh, some species are zoonotic, other species are others are species specific and won't be infected to other hosts. Um, so one we saw the other day was a horse strung aisle. Uh, so transmission can be direct contact with the larva. If you're walking barefoot uh, and you have a cut, then it can get into your system, uh, ingestion of infected tissue or contact with a fomite. So it's very easy to get uh, strung aisles uh, for your other animals as well. So here we have the ova and then you have the adult. And here's uh, some ova at different stages of development, um, but a very thin uh, membrane around it. And then you've got that kind of oblong shading in the center. Next, we have a type of hookworm. So Uncinaria species. So this is a type of hookworm. Hookworms are zoonotic. Uh, remember the hookworm looks like a hook. Uh, transmission is direct contact with the larva, ingestion of the larva, and also um, through the milk. So our infants, when they are feeding off of their mother, then it can be in the milk and the mammary gland. So it can be transmitted that way. Uh, so if you're if you would ha ingest raw milk, that would be a potential then for you to be able to ingest hookworm. And so here is our egg. These are two different species. So you can see right next to each other, there's not too much difference except there's a good size difference between those two species right there. Um, so again, just a nice little line. And then inside I would do more kind of shaded circles together because to me it looks like little clusters of circles inside of it. Next we have Isospora species. Now we're going to get into the protozoa. So Isospora is a type of coccidia protozoa. They are host specific. Uh, there's two species found in felines and then there's four found in canines. They generally um, do not cause clinical illness. Most animals will have coccidia in some way, shape, or form. Like even you guys have it, but your body generally is able to, to fight it off so it doesn't cause severe symptoms or clinical illness is what we would say. Um, but if there is an overabundance of this, you may see diarrhea in your animals. You may see drastic weight loss, dehydration in kittens and puppies. So here is our protozoa, not to be confused with an ova. This is a single-celled organism. So we have a line around with two then holes, or not holes, but circles in the center of that. So that is a protozoa. Um, and that was your isopora. Here is your emira. So Mira is another type of coccidia. It is host specific. So there are species found in poultry, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, horses, rabbits, kangaroos. Uh, they generally cause little to no disease. And then here is 
that. So now I have one, two, three circles inside, but even within that, then I have some others. So that's how I'm going to be able to tell the difference with those. The last we have is Giardia. Many of us have heard of Giardia before. So Giardia is a type of protozoa, definitely potential for zoonosis. Most are species specific, but there is a species that will transmit between domestic animals and humans quite regularly. Uh, so this is infested water, uh, grasses that may have been defecated on and you just can't see. And then our picture shows the young to the adult. So we have our cyst and then we 